to the courthouse where the bail hearing is set for Patrick Ho of the CEFC China Energy, otherwise known as China Energy Fund Committee. He bribed at the UN, allegedly, allegedly. He paid bribes to Sam Kutessa, President of the General Assembly. He paid bribes to, along with Kate Gaddy. What you can say about this trial is that there's a lot of email evidence. Now, they're trying to get it um, thrown out of the case. Can't use it, but I don't know. Seems like they had a warrant. Anyway, let's get to the bottom of it. Just how corrupt is the United Nations? That will be our question today. We'll have to give up our phone for now. But we will definitely broadcast when we come back out. Okay, to be continued. Okay, here we are. The Patrick Ho bail, bail hearing has now, has now ended. No bail granted. They'll be back. They'll be back in uh, May 17th. The judge uh, kind of toyed with them. That's how I'd put it. It was a lengthy proceeding. Uh, Mr. Lavander, Patrick, Ho, Patrick Ho's lawyer, uh, said, you know, we have a motion to dismiss. We have a motion to suppress. A point was made that while in jail, he couldn't email for 10 days and his wife was worried. That would seem to militate for everyone in the MCC being released, though. Um, the judge became really obsessed with this idea that Patrick Ho's mother in Hong Kong could somehow transfer the equity in her home to a, some kind of a bucket of mortgages, she called it, here in the United States so that the government could get it, a total of $6 million. The question is, she called it moral suasion. It's not the moral suasion, she said. Um, on the other hand, it seems clear that even if the two, the motion to suppress and the, the uh, motion to dismiss were granted, it's not of the whole case. The case would still go forward. There was a dispute about how lengthy the sentence would be if he's convicted. Would it be 48 months? Would it be 87 months? That was all there. We're gonna, we'll do a stand-up. Well, why not? It's a little quiet out here, to be honest with you. There were about 20 people in the courthouse. Um, I don't want to get into the demographics, but uh, Patrico had five lawyers and there were three prosecutors. Uh, Mr. Zulkin was the lead government attorney. I don't know where Mr. Richenthal was. He's another lawyer that's... The, Pat, the, the, the Yang Lap Seng, the other UN bribery case, did come up um, in terms of a finding by, yes, Judge Broderick, who allowed Man Lap Seng to still be living in his apartment on 47th Street. But that's another issue. So here's what I learned from it in terms of the UN, that the, the scheme to bribe um, the president of Chad, Idris Deby began at the UN itself. Uh, this was emphasized that Patrick Ho and Sheikh Gaddio at the UN planned this $2 million bribe to the president of Chad. Now, there's been an argument that, that when the president of Chad, according to the report filed back with the company in Shanghai, joked about a Brazilian bribe for, another, for an oil concession, he was laughing or joking? She seemed to... The distinction Mr. Zulkin made was that uh, he was said it laughingly, which didn't mean that it was false. It just meant that he was making light of bribery. There was also a discussion of the wire of $500,000 to Sam Kutessa, the president of the General Assembly. That's the thing. This is a UN bribery case. $500,000 given to Kutessa only about business, according to Mr. Zulkin, only about oil and infrastructure, nothing to do with charitable anything. Mr. Lavander said that this is a case where, this is now it's all coming back, Mr. Lavander said this is a case where the charitable impulses of this uh, Chinese business were misconflated as bribery. But he also said, and quoted as a, as a, as a, in support of the idea that Mr. Ho would return to trial if he were released, that he sees that he's, it's not just him on trial. CEFC is on trial. And Mr. Lavander said repeatedly CEFC, the government trying not to use that name for whatever reason. The CEFC is on trial, and in fact, Belt and Road is on trial. In this case, in this courthouse, according to the defense attorney of Patrick Ho, this is a trial of the tiger of Chinese government and its Belt and Road, its Belt and Road scheme. So, basically, from a UN perspective, you have now twice, twice, because Eng Lap saying, by the way, and again, I, I say this is not with any axe to grind so much as the UN is a fraud. The UN has tried to say it has nothing to do with these cases. No. Because it goes beyond these two cases. There is a concerted effort, and every country would try to buy access at the UN. Every country would try to, I don't know if they try to get a false GA document, but they certainly, hey, China, China government was able, with a Chinese state air, airline, to get Allison Smale of the Department of Public Information to fly down to South Carolina for a fraudulent photo op in a plane that couldn't fly. So there's a continuum here of 
bribery at the UN. Now, there have been two cases, but there's much more going on, including of the Department of Public Information. And just as a personal aside, as Inner City Press has reported, in more detail than anyone at the UN, on these cases, the UN's response was to throw Inner City Press out of the UN, out of its office, awarding that office to a state media of Egypt that asked no questions about corruption. The UN is corrupt. Now, as to Patrick Ho, he didn't obviously speak in these... He, he was there in a sort of a brown smock, and at the end of the hearing, he was... He shook hands with his lawyers and was led back into the plumbing system. I'm interested in this 10-day lockdown of MCC that he couldn't email out. There was also... Oh, there was also a lot of discussion. This will give a full picture, hopefully, of the difficulty of preparing for trial with Mr. Patrick Ho in jail. And the judge, and this is why I again say it's kind of a cat and mouse situation, because it's like many things are being considered, many attorneys' fees, hours are going up, but that there might be a takeout order, not takeout food, as was the case with with uh, uh, Eng Lap Seng and his restaurant stopovers, but a takeout order so that he could do, Patrick Ho could go to a mock jury with Mr. Lavander. Now, not multiple mock juries, the judge was quick to point out, but mock juries so that he could prepare to see how his Chinese character would resonate. This is what was said. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on, but the upshot is even Mr. Ho, in the email used in his defense, was saying that this case is about the Belt and Road. And this case is about the UN. This case was bribery done at the UN, the purchase of the United Nations. Now, many countries want to bribe the United Nations, but it is taking place, and the UN's only reaction to it, CEFC, China Energy Fund Committee, is still in consultative status with ECOSOC. It's an absolute travesty. ECOSOC has as its president the ambassador of the Czech Republic, whose president has Ye Jiming, the head of CEFC China Energy, or at least previously, uh, as a personal economic advisor. But that's a Czech Republic issue. People are going to have to look at that. People might want to check out these homes in Hong Kong. I'm going to head back to the UN because the UN is corrupt and they're not addressing the things that come out in this case to show just how wide open, from top to bottom, down to the Department of Public Information, which took N. Lapsang's money and is still doing its bidding, the UN is corrupt to be continued.